Our, our healer, our savior, our deliverer, our soon coming king, we glorify you this morning. Oh, we magnify the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that as it is in heaven, so is it here in this place, in these people, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, what is it like in heaven? Come on, there's joy. Perfection. Glory. Glory. There's perfection. Victory. Golden streets. Victory. Yeah, golden streets. But peace. Peace. Come on, peace is a big thing. Peace is a big thing. Is, is there any sickness or disease in heaven? No. Is there any lack or poverty in heaven? No. No. Come on. There's none of that in heaven. When Jesus said, thy will be done, oh, good morning, sweetheart. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Then he says, give us this day our daily bread. You can sit down. Amen. What is he talking about? Everything you have need of today, this day, let it be done for you. You need it, it's in heaven. You are a child of God, you're from heaven. Amen. You say, well, I don't, I, I was born in such and such a, no. When you were born again, you were born from heaven. Amen. Come on, you're not, you're not an earthly creature. No. Well, earthly creatures, come on, I don't want to be just an old earthly creature. I'm a heavenly creature. Right. Amen. I'm a heavenly creature. I'm a child of God. Listen, I have two kids over here and they resemble me and my wife. Uh -huh. Come on. You're a child of God. Who do you resemble? Amen. You resemble your father. Amen. 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 You're a child of God. You resemble your father. Amen. I mean, my kids have attributes that are just like mine. Some of them make me laugh and smile, and others make me go, oh, dear. How does that get passed on? Do you know what I'm saying? When you're a child of God, you cease to be an earthly creature. Yeah, you still have this physical body. You're going to have this physical body till the Lord returns. Amen. Or you go to he go up to meet him. Right. Come on. But you're going to shed this earthly body. The it's going to be made new. Yeah. Come on. It's just a tent. Yeah. You're like camping, right? right? Right. You go in the tent, you come out of the tent. Right. You came into this earthly tent, you'll leave this earthly tent. Amen. And you'll have a new, better tent, a new, better, a new, better body made from heavenly, come on, made from heavenly stuff. Come on, it'll be glorious and it'll be glorifying. Hallelujah, Father, we worship you, we praise you this morning. Oh, it's so good to recall our heritage in the Lord. Amen. Come on, it's so good to recall our heritage in the Lord. I've been thinking so much lately. I think you know, we're we're. we're in, in, in November, we'll have been here six years. Wow. I have seen people come, and I have seen people go. And I'm still here. Amen. And you know what's different? Yeah. You too. Come on. What's different about you is that you're changing. Amen. Thank you. You're growing. Amen. There'll be people come by, walk through, walk in, walk out. They're not changing. Right. They don't like something, they leave. Church isn't about you. Church isn't about me. If it was about me, I'd say, it's too hot. Let's not have church today. <laughs> there's some of you who need the air conditioning. You need the break. Come on. And those of you with air conditioning problems, I'm praying for you and believing for you for air conditioning. We were driving yesterday, and Kathy was saying, we were driving through Shingle Springs. It was 111. Yeah. And she said, for such a time as this, we have come in to the kingdom where there's air conditioning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, we got a couple things coming up. We're not going to have kids' church this morning. It's just too hot over in that building. Y'all just sit and be quiet and eat. <laughs> That's what they're going to do anyway, right? They're going to sit and be quiet and eat. <laughs> it's a couple of announcements on... Sunday, July 25th, we are having a business meeting in the church. That means everybody who is a, is a member of the church 
You're going to come to church that Sunday, and afterwards, we're going to have a short business meeting. Uh, we've got a neighbor down the hill that has put a whole bunch of effort and work into, um, they want to purchase a little tiny sliver of land at the bottom of the hill with trees and blackberries that nobody ever goes to. They just want to add it to their backyard. And they're going to pay us. I'm like that. Right. We're less than 10,000 square, or 10,000, or 10 acres, 10,000 acres. Oh. We're less than 10 acres already, so it doesn't, it's not going to change anything with us. All right, so you guys need to come. You need to vote on that. You get to hear, you know, church business -y stuff like that. It's so exciting. We just love church business meetings. Amen. <laughs> Um, and on the 31st, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we're going to have that as the Saturday, the last Saturday of July. We're having a, a pool party and baptism at Debbie Land's house. She said she said it's been so warm, she walked straight into her pool, and she, she didn't have any adjustment time. Come on, that, that's nice, right? There's no adjustment time. Huh? What was that date? July 31st. It's a Saturday. It's from 10 to 2. No, don't know me. I know. It's all right. All right, so baptism. So if you've been baptized, and I know we've got a lot of people, listen, we've got a lot of people out of town this weekend, vacations, and I, and I knew that that was going to happen because I told everybody not to go on vacation on July 4th. That's right, and we listened. And you listened. Yes. And you were all here. Yes. And also this weekend you can go on vacations, you can go traveling, you can go, you can go camping, but I need, I need you here for the 25th for the board meeting, and then if you can, if you can um, to be here for the 31st, uh, for, for the baptism and pool party. Um, so anyway, we, we went up to uh, Wright's Lake uh, the other day. Oh, it is so nice up there. Took the kayaks and the paddle board, and went out on the lake, and the water was just, it's so nice. It's just a little bit cool, but it was just really nice. It was nice wind and breeze, and we had a fantastic it's time. Crowded there? I, it is much less crowded there than like, um, like, Right, right. Oh, you, yeah, oh, way less crowded. Um, Loon Lake and Wrights Lake are really nice. They're, they're a little bit, they're about an hour drive from here. Great places to go. We are so blessed to live in such a beautiful area, aren't we? Where you can, where you can, where you can escape the snow in the winter, and you can escape the heat in the summer. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God knew what I needed. Yeah, it was only it was only like 81 degrees at Wrights Lake on what is it? We went Friday. Yeah, it was or Thursday. It was like 81, 82 degrees. It was perfect. It was wonderful. It's a great place to go. Don't tell anybody about it because we don't want it to become overcrowded. That's right. He said on live Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, Father. We just thank you for your Spirit. We thank you for your Word, Father. We glorify you this morning. We pray that. Our ears would be open to hear and our hearts would be receptive to receive your word this morning. I pray that I would have boldness to preach your word. We thank you, Father, for every person who's here in person or watching live on Facebook or will catch up with us later on YouTube. Father, we thank you that the word of God is being preached and that we have the freedom to do so in this great country. There's some of you, I got a test, uh, I got a uh, a text message from my friend Sandy uh, from Billy Brim. Uh, a friend of hers has this wonderful prophetic word. Y'all are going to love it. I'm going to send it. It's a text message to you. Amen. Amen. This morning, well, yesterday I was, thinking, I was thinking to the Lord, I thought, Lord, what is it? Because, you know, I can do all kinds of messages. I could, I could teach all different kinds of messages. Excuse me. But I was thinking yesterday, Lord, what is it you really want? people to hear tomorrow? What is it that you want me to share with people tomorrow? And I kept hearing this reoccurring inside me. Facilitate a move of God. Facilitate a move of God. What does it mean to facilitate? It means you open yourself, you, are, you, you, have, you have made yourself available, and you are working with and helping to guide a move of God. Can you, you, can you personally facilitate a move of God? Yeah. Yes. yes, absolutely you can. What kind of move of God can you facilitate? The most important kind of move of God that you can facilitate is one in your own life. 
You don't have to, you don't have to, I was, I was, I was on Facebook this morning, and, I, and I, I still don't know how to pronounce his last name, it's been over a year, Sean Fecht, or Fucht, or Fout, uh, he, he, Fucht, Fucht, and he, he, he does, he goes around and he does these, let us worship in all of these, all of these major big cities across the country. And he did one in San Francisco. Come on, can you think of a better place to have a, have a, have a come let us worship? rally with thousands of people gathered together to worship the Lord than in San Francisco. Yeah. I love, he posted on Facebook, he posted about, he said, the glory of God came down but the devils came out too. Yeah. Yeah. And they were bashing in cars of people that were gathered for the meetings. Listen, the devils don't want to, they don't want to give up anything. No. Devils like to hold on to everything and not give up anything. Right. Amen? Amen? I mean, it's just the way it is. Right. And then he posted, you know, I don't know if you know, but before he started the Let Us Worship, he said the Lord told him to run for Congress. And so he did. He ran for Congress. And he didn't win. And he was very distraught over the whole situation. And the Lord said, do you still trust me? He said, well, yeah, of course I do. He said, because now you're going to start these worship meetings. And... The worship meetings. Listen, there's a lot of times in your life when God will speak to you and you do what God says and it doesn't come out the way you thought it was going to. There you go. I know for a fact we were in church. Faith was just almost going to turn a year old. And I'm going to take my flip-flops off if you don't mind. <laughs> my flip-flops. He's wearing shorts and flip-flops. It's 100 and something degrees outside. I know, we were in church and I lifted up my arms and I'm worshiping the Lord. And you know, when you're really worshiping the Lord and you're not worried about <clears throat> what the source of worship is, what the song that's playing is, but you are worshiping the Lord. And I was worshiping the Lord and he spoke in my heart and he said, I want you to move to Idaho. And I said, all right. Do you know how many times I've tried to leave California? <laughs> I, have, I have successfully left California three times. Bible school, Idaho, and Alaska. All of those were great. So where we're... We, we make this plan, and we're moving, and, and we're so excited, and the day before we left... Again, this is like this is like 16 years ago. We sold our house, quit our really good jobs. Yeah. I was an executive director for the Salvation Army in San Luis Obispo. Kathy was an orthodontic assistant. I mean, she was. I mean, she's like top top in the top in the office. And, and we had this beautiful home, and we had this little baby, and we moved to Idaho. Yeah. The day before we left, the Lord said, when you get to Idaho, if I tell you to come back, will you? I said, well, sure I will, but you're not going to do that. You told me to go. Come on. Listen. Now, God doesn't change his mind. God had a plan. <clears throat> we moved to Idaho. We're there. We're, I, I love this. My, my parents drove us there, and we were living in a fifth-wheel trailer in a trailer park in Post Falls, Idaho. Next to the freeway with two cats, a litter box, a baby, and a, and a bouncy, you know, the little bouncy thing that swivels and everything like that. And she's in there, you know, here we are, the Raymond graduates, faith people, faith explorations, following the plan of God. We're there for a month. It was time to come back to California. Called my parents. They said, okay, well, we barely just got back. It's going to take us a couple weeks to get back up there. So we were there for exactly two months. We're driving back. I tell this story. Why am I telling this story? Because I'm talking about facilitating the move of God in your life. Every believer can and should have a move of the Spirit in their lives. If you're a believer, that's the whole point. is for God to work in your life. So we can't... We're, we're, it's a long story, and I, I could get into all the details. I mean, you know, because um, I was right and she was wrong. That seldom happens. That's why you have to make a big deal out of it. 
we were coming back, and, and we, had, we had planned what we were going to go back. I guess God wanted, because it was in our hearts to start a church, we were going to come back, and we were going to start a church, and I'm praying in tongues. Why, why, what, what's, what's the deal about praying in tongues? Well, praying in tongues opens you up spiritually. It edifies you. If you don't pray in tongues, you need to pray in tongues because that is one for sure way that God edifies, and he edifies us through the Spirit, by the Spirit, speaking in tongues. Amen. Come on. Last Sunday night, Josiah got gloriously filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is one of the most supernatural things that a person can do. Faith did it when she was six. She's just like, what are you doing? I want to do it too. Boom, she was doing it. So we're coming back, and I'm praying in tongues. We're driving on the Columbia Gorge through Oregon. And the Lord speaks to my heart. He says, when you get back, I want you to go to such and such a church. I told Kathy, I said, the Lord just told me when we get back, we're supposed to. She said, no, we're not. <laughs> we're going to start our own church. We're not going to get stuck in somebody else's church doing their ministry. We're going to start a church. I'm like, okay, but I'm telling you, God told me we're supposed to go to such and such a church. So we came back the first Sunday. We went to the church that we used to go to. I'm telling you, it was like somebody was rubbing sandpaper in our hearts. It was just dark. It was the wrong place. We weren't supposed to be there. We both knew it. I said, okay, well, next Sunday, let's go to such and such a church. She says, okay, but remember, we're not going and just getting stuck in somebody's church. We're going to start a church. I'm like, okay. Cool. We went to that church. They had moved locations because we had visited it once. They had moved locations. The pastor who was there was no longer the pastor. It was a Rama couple. And they told us if you had just if you had just heard about us being here, right. you could never have we would we would never have been able to use you in ministry because you're just church hopping. If we had just left one church and gone to another church, but because God took you and moved you out of state and brought you back, you're not church shopping. God moved you for us. Amen. Come on. Sometimes God will move you to help someone else. Well, I think I'm 100% I'm convinced that's why we went to Alaska. Listen, unless you're willing and obedient to do the really crazy stuff, like move out of state and then come right back. <laughs> Alaska's not an easy move. No, it's not. It takes seven days to drive there. Yeah. Cold there. Well, well, not just when we went to Alaska, we had two kids, we had a dog and a cat in the car, yeah. all the way there. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> to this day, we, Josiah says, "Where are we going?" Uh, Which it's just going to be a short drive. But God moved us up there. I was I was uh, coming coming. I was going up there. I, I, there was a church that needed a pastor, and I was going to go, and I was going to be their pastor. I preached there the first Sunday, the only Sunday, and it was it was like being it was like being back at that other church. It just scratched on the inside. It was dark. It was, I was in somebody else's church, and so the guy who'd been kind of overseeing the church for the last year had all these theology degrees. And had been pastoring the people for a year. And I said to him, I'm not supposed to be the pastor here, you are. Do you know how hard that was to do? I moved there to take over this church. And then you get there and you have to admit to yourself. I'm talking about having a move of God in your life, facilitating a move of God in your life. Now listen, it's not, listen, when I say facilitate a move of God in your life, that doesn't mean God's always going to move you somewhere. Yeah. But just the two of us. <laughs> that man is still the pastor of that church. He got his credentials at the Assemblies of God. He said it never occurred to him. I'm like, he is still the pastor of that church. While most people are expecting some big spectacular event or events, the most common move of God in your life is going to be listening and hearing and being led by his spirit in you. Yes. Yeah. Come on. And it doesn't have to be big stuff. Right. Go over here and talk to this person. Yeah. You're in a drive through God puts it on your heart. Tell that person in the window that I love them. Right. Do you ever do that? Yeah. I've done that. But by the leading of the Holy Spirit, right. just over, overwhelms me. Tell that person that I love them. And I, there's a special anointing that comes on when you, when you do that. And I told that the lady in the drive-thru window, I said, 
God wanted me to tell you that he loves you. And she started crying. She said, thank you. I needed to hear that today. That's a move of God. You are facilitating a move of God in your life by obeying the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You're letting him move in you and through you. Hallelujah. The Old Testament, God used prophets to reveal himself and to lead the people of God. But the Old Testament prophet isn't the same gift today. You don't need... You don't need to go to a prophet and get a word of direction for leading your life. One time I went searching for a word from God from a prophet that was visiting a local church. And I was, I was the most miserable person I had ever been sitting in that church waiting for the prophet. And I, and I got up and I went to the bathroom. The Lord said, go, go to the bathroom. I don't know why it's always the bathroom. Right. Quiet. I went to the bathroom. He said, he rebuked me. He said, you don't need to go searching after a prophet to hear from me. I live on the inside. Right. Yeah. This is before we went to Bible school. He said, stop seeking prophets Amen. and seek me. I'm on the inside of you. Amen. We are spirit beings, and God is a spirit, and God lives in us. And under this dispensation, we don't have to go to the prophets. Now, you can get a prophetic word from somebody. Somebody can prophesy to you. And if it, if it confirms what you already know, then that's a word of confirmation from God. If it doesn't, and it comes out of left field, and it doesn't even apply to your life, you just shelve it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That is one thing we learned a long time ago. Chew up the hay, spit out the sticks. People get, you know people get offended over the craziest things? They'll leave a church over one wrong thing. Well, I can't go back to that church. Right. Well, bless your darling perfect heart. <laughs> That's good. We left a church one time. Abruptly. That's not to say. One time we left, we left a church. God spoke to Kathy. God spoke to me. And God spoke to our pastor and told him that we were going to be leaving. Yeah. Yeah. And he released us. Yes. Yes. Only one time did we ever leave a church over something that was done. And it was because this pers the, the, the person that was the head of the church was standing at the head of the church and had all of the pastor's staff come up and tell everybody in the church, before you make any decision in your life, check with the apostle. Yeah. No. If God's going to do something, if God's going to move you, he's going to tell you, you're going to know it. And then if you need some confirmation, you've got a spiritual gift called the pastor. And he'll, he'll tell you, yeah, that, that witnesses to me too. That you ought to be doing that. But you don't ever have to go. Listen, the Old Testament is written for our admonition. It is types and shadows of the overall picture of what it's like to be led by the Spirit or to be led by the flesh. The Old Testament, come on, this will be hard for some of you, but it's the truth, was written to spiritually dead people. Nobody in the Old Testament was spiritually alive unto God the way that we are today. Yes, God spoke to the prophets and the men of old. And, so, and when I say men, I mean men and women as mankind. Okay? God, did, God doesn't, can I just tell you something? God doesn't look at you and see you as a gender. Right. He looks at you and sees you as his child. However, there are only two genders. And God created them. I know in today's age, it's a shame that we have to clarify that. But we do actually believe the Bible and that there are only two genders, and they're, they're for a specific reason. Yes. Yeah. And it's to procreate. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. People today leave churches and don't ever go back because of an offense. Right. Listen, you want to talk... I stayed in a church for four years with a pastor who regularly ridiculed me. Right. But God told me to stay. I wasn't released. When they let me go, when they fired me, I was free. 
And I went to where I knew I was supposed to be. Listen, I posted it this morning, and this, it doesn't make it any less true than I posted it on Facebook, and I'm saying it now. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Not so that he could fail, but to prove that he was victorious. God will sometimes lead you into a situation. Come on, I love this. Joyce Meyer says, patience isn't the, just the fact that you can stand and wait. It's your attitude while you're waiting. Right. Jesus' attitude in the wilderness was always, God is greater than any temptation. Amen. God is helping me to overcome every situation. Amen. And I can do it with a smile on my face because I know greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Yes. God was working in us about every situation. Sometimes where you're at, Listen, Jesus in the wilderness, that was a proving ground. Some of you, right now, you're just going to realize that the reason you're in the situation you're in is that God is allowing you to go through something so you can depend on him in the proving ground so that you can grow. So that you can move on to the next phase of the ministry or the next thing that God has for you. And do you know where you need to be in every season of your life? In church. God never, with exception, is Michael, Michael messaged me last night. He said, I think that the Lord wants me to not go to church tomorrow because he wants me to go meet with someone else. I'm like, well, praise the Lord. Go do that. Be led by the Spirit. But God will never lead you to stop going to church. In all those years where I was ridiculed by that pastor, God bless him. I forgive him. I love him. I saw him about a year ago, hugged on his neck. Listen. Attitude is everything while you're going through. Yeah. When, you, when you come up with different reasons not to do something that you know you're supposed to do, you're actually showing your immaturity. Right. I don't mean to you know, talk about kids, but you, you, know, you, you gotta talk about kids because kids are children, right? They, they, they don't get the full picture. They're learning. They're learning. Adolescence, childhood, the teenage years, they're all a time where you're supposed to be learning and growing. Right. Now, I get not, not every child have the best parents. But you have the best God. Yes. Hallelujah. And the best God can make all the difference in the world. When we trust and rely on him and we're obedient to him. Yes. So children don't know. Is, no, you, you shouldn't eat cereal three times a day. Yeah. No, no. You, 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 you don't need two donuts. You might think you do. You like the sugar, right? <laughs> Who doesn't like sugar? I don't really like sugar anymore. Uh -huh. And it doesn't really like me. Which I'm glad for. Proverbs 20, verse 7. Somebody said, oh, is he finally going to get into the Bible? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7 says, The spirit of a man is the lamp or the candle of the Lord, searching all the inmost parts of a person. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of man. The spirit is the, the innermost part of a person. Paul said in Thessalonians, he said, that God would preserve your whole spirit soul and body. Amen. He didn't say your whole body, soul, and spirit. Yeah. You know, the world puts it body, soul, and spirit. Yeah, yeah. Which is the exact opposite of the way God puts it. We need to be dealing first with the spiritual stuff. Amen. You need to be born again. Yeah. Then you need to deal with the soulish stuff. Your mind, will, intellect, and emotions. Because you've got to get those under control. Yeah, yeah. You know, a baby, when they're hungry, all they do is just cry. Yeah. They have got no self-control. But then, I, you know, it's not until they can start talking that you can start understanding what it is that they want. Right. You, know, you get a dog, and, you know, you get a smart dog like Mia, you know. I mean, if she comes and pushes her nose at me a few times, that means she needs something. And, and I, I have to get up and go out and, and follow her to where it is that she thinks that she's got that she needs something. Yeah. Half the time, it's to her water dish. I'm telling you what, that dog drinks so much water. <laughs> All year. She drinks so much water. 
Today, we have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us, and we can count on our hearts. Where the Old Testament, I have a friend who used to say, well, you can't trust your heart. The Bible says it's deceitfully wicked above all things. No man can trust it. No. Well, it was under the Old Testament. It was before Jesus. It was before the Spirit of God came and dwelt inside of us. And then according to Romans 8, 11, it says that he came and he shed the love of God abroad in our hearts by his Spirit who's in us. If God's love is shed abroad in your heart, can you trust your heart? Yes. Come on, because you've got the Spirit of God in you. Right. Now, the Spirit of God in you and the love of God shed abroad in your heart is never going to lead you to do things that you shouldn't do. No. God's never going to contradict himself. God bless her, this one lady, she says, well, the Lord just told me I'm supposed to marry this man. Well, is he a believer? No. Well, then that contradicts the Bible. Well, I understand that, but God told me. You know, but God told me is a really good excuse a lot of people come up with to do what they want to do. It's not good. Oh, there goes everything. Just disappears again. I love when that happens. We can trust our hearts. I like Acts chapter 7, verse 59. Stephen has just been has just given this, this exhortation to the people of Israel and to all the people that are gathered in Jerusalem. And he's talking about them, how 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 hard-hearted they've been. And how God sent the Holy Spirit. And so you know what the religious leaders did? They decided to stone him because they considered they decided that he was blaspheming God. So they're stoning him, and, G, and, and Stephen says, it says he, he stands up, he looks up into the heavens and sees Jesus seated on the throne, and he says, Lord, receive my spirit. Hallelujah. Stephen understood. You're a spirit. That's right. Before you came to Christ, you were spiritually dead. Yeah. What, is, what is death? Gone. Separation? Non no, it's not, actually. No. Death is separation. Okay. God told Adam and Eve in the garden, he said, in the day that you eat that fruit, you will surely die. Did they physically die? No, it took 900 years for them to die. Yeah. Do you see how well God made these bodies originally before sin came in? Yeah. They were intended to live a long time. That's why, you know, we, you know, we do everything we can to look young as long as we can. Because we just know that God wants us to look good and live long. Right. Come on. God wants you to look good and live long. Right. Death is separation. Because what immediately happened when they ate that fruit was they got cast out of the presence of God. When you leave your body as a believer, you don't die. You actually become closer to the Lord. You'll see him face to face. Yes. But when an unbeliever dies, when they leave their body, they're spiritually dead. And they go to hell. Hell was created for Satan yes. and the fallen angels. Yes. God doesn't intend for anybody to go there. No. Death is separation from God. Yes. John 16, verses 13 through 15. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. And he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. What is the, what is the Holy Spirit going to do for you? He's going to talk to you. He's going to tell you the plan of God for your life. He's going to lead you in the plan that God has for you. He, come on. He's going to help you fulfill the plan of God for your life. That's you facilitating a move of God in your life when you listen to the Holy Spirit. There you go. Listen, there are some people, listen, I, I, see, I see churches that, that, that say through COVID, if you're sick, stay home. But I read in James that if any of you among you is sick, bring them before the elders and anoint them with oil and lay hands on them and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Amen. Where did, where did, we 
we, we've missed it by not understanding the Word of God. The greatest move of God you're going to have in your life is hearing the plan of God through the Holy Spirit. And I want you to go to such and such a place. This is how Paul lived his life, his, min, his, mission, his missionary trips. He would plan them and he'd say, well, if the Lord is willing, we're going to go this direction. That's the same as Abraham. I want you to get up, and I'm going to take you to a place that I'll tell you about later. Would you do that? Yeah. If God said, sell your home and be ready to move. Right. Yeah. You're going to sell your home and be ready to move. Yeah. We want to say yes, right? Yeah. Come on. We have to. We have to be willing to do it. Because God might not might, but definitely has something better for you. Amen. God is never going to leave. Listen, in all the times that God picked us up and moved us, he never put us in a worse situation on the other side. Right. Every time he did, we ended up better. Right. Why? Because we're being obedient. Amen. He said, if you'll be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Come on, I want to eat the good of the land. Me too. I enjoy having nicer things. Yes. I enjoy doing good things. I look at people with trailers. I'm like, I want a trailer. I, do too. I, want I know you do. I don't have anything to tow it with. <laughs> Me either. But listen, God will always take you to what's better. Right. Jesus went into the wilderness, led by the Spirit, came out anointed by the Spirit to do mighty works. Hallelujah. One of the mightiest works he did he led it not in, it's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus says, He says, Lord, I don't, Father, I don't want to do this, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He didn't want to physically go to the cross, but he did it for the joy that was set before him. Because when he was done, and when he was raised again, he was seated in heaven, and he has a name that is above all names. Yeah. Yeah. That in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. He has a better name by inheritance. His name. Peter and, uh, Peter and James and, and are, are leaving the temple. And there's a man that's been sitting there most of his life who's crippled. How many, I think, how many times did Jesus walk by him? But he was never led by the Spirit. It wasn't time. Right. That doesn't mean it's not time for you to get healed. Right. It's always time to get healed. Amen. Because you have it in your covenant. That man who was sitting there didn't have it in his covenant. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. But he's a covenant man by the time he died. That is good. Yeah. Good. What did Peter and James say to him? Rise up and walk. Yes. He, said, he said, don't, don't glorify. They, they went on to say, don't magnify us as if we had done something. He, they said, it was by faith in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. that this man walks. Come on, by faith in the name of Jesus, you can do anything. Yes, that's right. The Holy Spirit is working in you and wants to work with you. And he wants you to facilitate a move of the Spirit in your life. Yes. People want to say, well, I, you know, I, I want to see a, a, a move of God in California. I want to see a move of God in my church. If you want to see a move of God in your church and a move of God in California, you need to be having a move of God in you. That's right. Every move of God began with one person right. or a couple of people getting together yes. or 120 in the upper room. Yes. Jesus had, a, had, had, had thousands of people following him. Right. After 40 days of being in the upper room, there were 120 people left that were worshiping and they were expecting the promise of God. And because they were together and they were expecting it doesn't say that they were in their own homes Zooming each other. No. <laughs> Watching live on Facebook. Do you know how many times I'm tempted not to do live anymore? <laughs> and that's why I do it, because not every... <laughs> Listen. They were together in one accord, waiting for the promise of God. They, they had made themselves facilitators for a move of God. Stephen, as short-lived as it was, was a facilitator for a move of God. 
Paul, the facilitator for a move of God. He had a move of God in his own life. And he took that move of God in his life and he took it everywhere he went. Come on. John records in 14, chapter 14, verses 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he, the Spirit, may abide with you forever. Come on, forever is, forever is a long time. You know, there are entire denominations that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit anymore. They are, they are literally quenching, and they have come up with man-made intellectual ideas. Right. What does the Bible say about man's wisdom? It's foolishness compared to the wisdom of God. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But here's, here's what Jesus says. He's speaking to his disciples. Are you one of his disciples? Yes. yes. Come on, if you're a follower, you're a believer in Jesus, you're a disciple of Jesus. Yes. Amen? Yes. He says to his disciples, but you know him, for he dwells in you, and, or with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. How is Jesus going to come to you? By his spirit living on the inside of you. Amen. The Bible, the, Jesus says, he says, where are two or more gathered together in my name? There I am in the midst of you. Amen. There I am. When you are together with other believers, come on. Right. There you go. And the more, as they say, the merrier. Right. The more there are people to gather, gathered together in his name, there he is in the very midst of you. Right. Come on. Jesus is here right now, and you are here, and we are facilitating a move of his spirit in this place. Amen. You are a facilitator of the presence of God. You are. I am. Children can be. Why? Because they've got the spirit of God in them. They come expecting. Yes. I love my son. But he said to me last week, after Kevin and Annie were here, he said, Daddy, I still love you. But the Durants are my favorite preachers now. <laughs> I said, well, praise the Lord. I've got favorite preachers too. But he still wants to be in here on Sunday mornings instead of being in children's church. Well, it's a compliment to the Father. Amen. Amen. Amen? Listen, training up children in the way that they should go so that when they are old, they don't depart from it. Right. I can't remember when I was a kid. We, we didn't go to church. My parents had both been Church of Christ. And uh, they, there wasn't a whole lot of serving of God going on in our, in our family. We'll just put it that way. But my mom started going to a neighborhood Bible study. And the lady facilitating the Bible study loved Kenneth Hagin books. And she, she taught from Kenneth Hagin books. My mom got born again, filled with the Spirit, and then immediately got taken into a proving ground with multiple sclerosis. But she had learned enough already that God was her healer, and by the stripes on his back, she was healed, and she didn't have to have multiple sclerosis. She didn't know enough to, to, to believe for everything back. She believed what the doctors told her, you'll get about 90% back. But each time it'll be progressively worse. And it'll eventually take your life. She said, no, I'm healed. I will never have another event of multiple sclerosis. Several years later, they did a scan. All of the lesions in her brain that caused multiple sclerosis were gone. She facilitated a move of God in her life. And we started going to church. And I didn't like it. And I felt like I, felt like I was being forced into something I didn't want. What was happening? My mother and my father 
were raising me up in the way that I should go, so that when I'm old, I will not depart from it. They were introducing me to the God who saved them and to the God who healed my mom from multiple sclerosis. It is so important to have your children in church. I mean, you can bring, I remember being in church sometimes, and my, my parents didn't know this, I had a hangover. Because I had been out partying with my friends the night before. Now my dad knows. <laughs> I'm sitting in the back row of church with my friends, and we're just, you know, we're looking down at our flip-flops. We weren't paying any attention, but we were there. Come on. You can facilitate a move of God in your life, you can facilitate a move of God in your family's life. You can facilitate a God, move of God in your workplace. Right. Kathy at work, she, she's, the only, she's the only real believer at her, her office. And, and, and her best friend, I love, I love, I love her. They, they use a lot of um, expletives, colorful language, wow. and expletives. And, and, and somebody said something to, to Kathy, you know, well, you know, you shouldn't use language around Kathy like that because, you know, she's a Christian. And her friend says, well, I talk like that around her all the time. And she looked at Kathy. She says, yeah, but that's okay. It's you. Listen, we aren't concerned about colorful language. I'm more concerned about are you facilitating the move of God in your life? Because if you're facilitating the move of God in your life, if God starts to deal with you about colorful language or starts to deal with you about, you know, not doing things and other things, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because it's better that God deal with you about something and facilitate a move of God in your life. And people say, wow, you're so much different than you used to be. Right. And you want to say, well, is that a good thing? Yeah, it is. Right. I, I, I like who you're becoming because you're having God move in your life. You're becoming somebody who's different, somebody who's different than you used to be. You might say, well, I'm not like so-and-so. Well, so-and-so has been doing this for 30 years. Right. They weren't always like this either. Right. Come on, you got to have some place you get in with God and start allowing him to be a facilitator of a move of God in your life that's going to change the trajectory of your life forever and your children's lives and your family's lives. Come on, let God move in your life, even if it's tiny baby steps. You just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen, the Bible says if you are willing, willing, and obedient. That's two things. Right. Are you willing? Are you willing to do yes. whatever God wants you to do? Yes. You Will you obey whatever yes. God tells you to do? Yes. Come on, brother, said about yes. Noah before. Listen, yes. build an ark? We don't even know what an ark is. Right. Rain? <laughs> What's rain? Yeah. Floods? <laughs> We're going to wipe out everybody? Huh? Come on. And then you're going to fill it with what? <laughs> Noah had no idea what was going to happen. People would ridicule him. It says that Noah, through his actions, the Bible says that Noah, through his actions, prophesied. Did you know that? Through your actions, you can be prophesying to people around you. Hallelujah. Come on. Through what he did, he was a prophet. Amen. Come on. And then the rains came, and the earth opened up, and Noah was like, boom, I get it. The ark is to protect us. Come on. Noah facilitated a move of God that cleansed the earth of all the unrighteous and preserved the righteous. Come on, I don't know about you, but I want to be preserved with the righteous. I want to, I want to move, I want to move of God in my life. I keep saying, I keep saying, I tell you, I don't know if anybody else is getting anything, but I am, and I'm changing, and I'm growing out of it. Come on, it doesn't matter. Listen, I get it. YouTube music. I told Kevin and Annie. I said, well, you know, we're at the place right now where we're doing YouTube. You know, for, for worship and, and, and Deb leads with it. And then he, you know what he said? He said, Praise God. Amen. He said, Tracks are so dependable. <laughs> he said, They're always on, on key, they're never off pitch, you, they, they, they don't cause contention. 
They don't cause, they don't cause disruptions and backbiting. They always get along with the worship leader. Come on. Listen, you think, well, you know, I, I wouldn't want to go to that church. Come on, you better be in the church you're supposed to be in. And somebody called and leave a message. Well, do you have this and this and this and that? And I'm like, brother, you need to call someplace and, and just start going to a church. Right. You need to just be in a church. I didn't, I haven't called the person back. I'm like, I'm not really sure what to say. Say that. <laughs> you just need to be in church. Amen. This person hasn't been to church for over a year. That's where you need Come to on. You need to be in church. Church is the only place you need to be at on a regular basis besides at home with your family. Amen? Amen. Amen. You need to be in the presence of God. Yes. Listen, when we come together, you know, you know, every believer should, outside the church, you should be operating to some degree in the gifts and calling that God has for your life. Yes. But when it comes to it, the place where you're going to get the most encouragement, the most fulfilling, the most the most cooperation with the Holy Spirit is when you're in church with right. other believers who come expecting a move of God to happen also. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You need to be in church. Yes. Yes. God didn't call anybody to stop going to church. No. Well, God said for this season, no, God no, didn't say no. that. Never. God didn't say that. He didn't tell you that. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither knows him but you know him. And the Spirit of God doesn't desire that anybody should stop assembling together. Listen, the writer of Hebrews uh, chapter 10 very critically says, it will be the habit of many in the end times not to go to church and assemble together. But you be in church. When you come and you're allowing for God to facilitate in your life on a daily basis, and then you come to church with that same motive and that same expectation, then you're bringing the move of God. Listen, when you come to church, you are, as Peter said, a living stone jointly fit together for the master's use. Something, something happens when believers come together in a corporate setting that can never happen sitting at home in your room, listening to teachers, listening to worship music, because those are things that every believer needs to do anyway. It is not the same thing as assembling together. Right, who's going to hug you at home? Oh, I love me. Come on, where are you going to go when you need prayer? Where are you going to go when you need encouragement? Church. You're going to be in church. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't know where to jump off from here, but we're going to jump off from here. Heavenly Father, we just come right now in Jesus' name. Listen, if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you can do it. It's so easy. You just say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I repent of my sins. Come and... Dwell inside me by your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray, you know, pray that. Pray that. It's so vital. And then be in church. Don't ever let a year go by that you're not in church. Don't ever let months go by when you're not in church. Everybody needs to be in church. Listen. That there are ministry gifts that Jesus specifically gave the church. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, and pastor. One of the most supernatural things you can do, and I'm not saying this to boast on myself, one of the most supernatural things you can do is be in church with a pastor. Because it's a supernatural gift and office of God that every believer needs. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you next week.